going to have a look at this oscilloscope this evening um, someone's given me. Uh, it's a friend of mine who uh, scraps a lot of electronic equipment um, and he often clears out um, equipment from uh, various sort of electronic warehouses and things. Um, he also gave me the, if you remember, the Edston uh, radio that uh, I got restored a couple of, well, about a year ago, got that working. Um, he's dropped this off to me this evening, and this is a 54645 um, Hewlett Packard, and we use these actually at work. Um, we've got one of these still still working. Um, these are a really easy, nice to use scope. Um, they haven't got the performance of the Tektronix scopes for the uh, for the same era, they've got quite a low sample sample rate. They've only got 200 mega samples per second. This is a scope from the sort of like the uh, the late 90s. Um, it's similar to the scope I use in the workshop, which is the 54600B. Um, but the advantage of this one, it's got the mega zoom f facility, as you can see here, and that's great for when you uh, when you've got a waveform on the, on the on the screen, like a single shot. Uh, sample and you've got it on the screen you can actually adjust the time base and you can adjust the uh, volts per division and you and, and the, the waveform stays on the on the trace whereas without a mega zoom facility you haven't got that now he he has no idea what it uh, what it does and I haven't powered it up I have given it a bit of a clean up because it was covered in sort of like a like brick dust and stuff but it's uh, it's cleaned up quite nicely um, I mean, you can see here, I don't know if you can see, if you look very carefully, you can see the, the outline of, looks like screen burn, so I'm not sure what the emissions are going to be like. I've plugged it in, better plug it in, which plugged in, I haven't powered it up. Um, so we'll power it up, we'll have a look to see if it does anything at all. Um, we can't really soft start these, um, I've done an isolation check on it quickly and it all looks, looks alright, I think it's fine. So we'll power it up and see what it does. Uh, it might be absolutely fine, it might not be, so let's, let's see what happens. That's a good start. And the screen's up, and that looks okay. Let's see, let's see. key down, pat that key is not used in this menu. Okay, that's a key down power error message. Now that usually means that one of the buttons is stuck, so let's just try adjusting Okay, we've got no control over the scope at all. Nothing at all. So, it is possible that one of the buttons is stuck. Now, from past experience with these scopes, I do know that if the scope's been cleaned... Oh, I wonder if I've done it now. I'm starting to wonder if I've done it. If the screen's, if the scope's been cleaned and liquid gets into these switches, it shorts the switch out. Um, and it causes the switch to sort of migrate its um, carbon com track onto the switch and permanently short it out. And it could be possibly what's wrong with this scope at the moment. It certainly looks all right, okay. The emissions aren't great, but it's, it's certainly making uh, a decent display. And there weren't any other error messages. So I think the thing to do, probably the first thing to do, is to get the, the back off the scope uh, and have a quick look inside, see what condition it's in. Um, I don't know if it's been taken apart before and had a, anyone's had a look at it, but this is obviously why it's failed in service. Uh, I'd imagine that. I mean, it might be that I've done this short after cleaning it up, shorted one of these switches out, and uh, there's another problem lying underneath. So let's get the thing apart and have a look. Okay, this is the inside, and it all looks in really clean condition. Um, doesn't look anything missing. There's a couple of sort of SMA test points here by the looks of it, and there's the uh, all the amplifiers and hybrids that it uses. I've got a date code on here of, let's have a look, 82 is it, so we can find a date on any of these. The, there's obviously the ROMs, I'm trying to find a date code on here somewhere. It's like 97 on that chip there. Digital signal processor here. Looks like possibly 91 on that. Oh, 92. There's a 92. So it's a 90s scope, definitely. Um, late 90s, I would say. That looks like some RAM there for the probably for the um, Mega Zoom facility. But it's all nice and clean inside. So the next thing to do, I think, is to try and get the front panel off it. So we'll do that next and see how we get on. 
Okay, that's the front cover off. Um, basically, it comes off, the whole front panel pops off. You just lift the bottom clip out there. You can see in that clip. Remove the uh, trigger, uh, external trigger BNC. And that's the front panel off, comes off with the uh, the whole front panel and, the, and all the, the control gear, the front sw switches and uh, uh, encoders and things like that will come off. So let's power it up now and see if we get any uh, error message. So obviously it's pretty going to complain it hasn't got a front, can't detect the front panel, but let's see if we've lost the other error message. Ah, that's good. So that error message is gone. Um, it's powered up okay. So from there, we need to ascertain which switch has failed. Now, um, my favourite in the past experience is removing these front panel um, membrane switch here and see if that fixes the problem. So I'm going to take that apart. You see there's a bit of dust and crap inside, so I probably need to blow all that out. So we'll have a look at that next and uh, hopefully find something um, d definite of what, what's causing the problem. Right, I don't know what this is going to look like on camera because I haven't got my camera in the workshop this evening so I'm using my mobile phone and wedged between the Technics amplifier on the shelf. I'm going to attempt to take this um, switch contact apart. I'm going to go for the switches here on the bottom of the, uh, the soft key as they call them because uh, they're the ones that are most likely going to have caused the problem when I cleaned it, if that is the problem of course. Uh, so I'm going to pop this switch out. You need to be a bit careful here, but they just they just slot in with these little tiny catches here. I'm going to just try and pop these out. Um, it's a bit fragile, and they're not really designed to come out, I don't think, once they've been placed into the unit. So let's just try and... There's one end out. Just get a screwdriver in the, in the slot there, and just gently pry on the board, and it slides out like that. Okay. Just have a look at the switch contact. Ah, now you can see. I don't know if you can see here. Let me just move it a bit closer so you can see. These these are the switch contacts. I don't know if you can see. There's a bit. I mean, it's very difficult to see in the light there, but there's there is there is some muck between the. The switch contact. So I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that off. Um, and it looks like it's been. This has had the similar repair that I've done before on these scopes. Someone else has had the same about silver paint on these contacts when they wear out, and it looks like it's migrated off this contact and shorted the switch out. So I think I've got some silver paint. I can actually repair that. So let's take these switches out. And you can see this, this silver paint's totally come off this contact here. Uh, it's just flaking off. So I'm going to clean all that off. Uh, so we'll do that now. We'll clean that off with isopropanol. And uh, let me just see if I can find my silver paint. If it's still fluid. And some silver paint. You can see it's separated in the bottom of the jar, so I need to mix that up. What I'll do is I'll clean these contacts up. So I'll wipe off the excess. There. Get the loose parts off. Try and get this mixed up. This, this, this silver paint I'm using here is actually, uh, we do use this at work, this is designed to, to protect um, high voltage encapsulated uh, modules uh, to prevent them flashing over at high altitude. Um, and it's conductive paint, um, but it has a very limited shelf life as you can see. I think the shelf life on this is November 2006, so um, even though we can't use it in military applications, we can. it can be still used if you were... Uh, if you've got the time of mixing it up with a bit of thinners um, and it's um, and you can get it to stay liquid that's the big problem with it. it it does tend to become very solid with time so what I need to do is I need to clean up the switch contacts 
to make sure that they're clean when I uh, reapply some of this silver paint. So I'm just going to wipe these over with isopropanol. And this is the big problem. You can see this is the original copper coming off on uh, the, the original carbon coming off on the on the rag when I wipe it off. Um, but unfortunately, what happens is the carbon is uh, not good enough to activate the switches after a time. It sort of if, if you if you get the switches wet and that carbon migrates, there's only a very thin film on there. Um, and it, if you put a meter across there, it's, it's actually not not conductive anymore. So the switches actually stop working altogether. So let's just stir this paint up properly. Uh, let's use a bigger screwdriver. Fairly liquid now. Okay. So let's uh, give this a shake up. Okay, right, let's try this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spot of, spot of paint on the end of a screwdriver. I'm not going to use a brush, I'm just going to put a small dob on the end of each contact. Like that. And try and make it as flat as possible. I'm hoping it's going to adhere to the. Uh, rubber track properly okay a nice even layer on there so all we're going to do now is let that dry so we're going to put the uh, hot air gun on it Gently apply heat to that to boil off the suspension so it just leaves the paint behind. Just keeping my hand in the way just to, so I can feel how hot it is so I don't overheat it. Okay, that should be fine. The next thing to do, as it has migrated to the switch, and obviously the original problem was not the switch not working, rather than the switch is shorted all the time, so the CPU thinks that someone's holding a, a button down, I need to clean off um, any remnants of the silver paint on the switch itself. It. Carefully make sure you remove all the paint contamination between the contacts. Now you have to be very careful because anything that will short out that switch will activate the switch obviously so you need to be... what you could do is actually check it with a, uh, a multimeter if, 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 if that's the problem, if it's going to be a problem but it, I can see there 
those tracks are all clean. So the next thing to do is to put this thing back together. Um, I'm just hoping that the thing's going to stay on the, the paints are not going to migrate as soon as I uh, start to reassemble it. So just making sure there's no excess paint that could possibly short the switch out unnecessarily. Just removing the paint from around the edges here. So I think what I'll do is I'll pop the switches back in, so make sure the switches go back in properly. I seem to remember the last time I did this, it was a bit of a problem to get them aligned correctly. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Just what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just popping the rubber membrane back into the... I've just noticed I've got the switch up the wrong way, that's probably why it's not going in very easily. You've got a couple of slots machined in the in the rubber to, that locate into the uh, plastic of the, the front panel. fiddle this part getting these back in without touching the obviously touching the paint that you've just uh, applied Hmm. Not much luck with this. Problem is just getting the rubber membrane to slide down between the, the bit that supports it. Okay, let's get the switch back together and I'll continue the video because otherwise you're going to be watching me trying to get this in. Okay, five minutes later, I've got the switches back in. Yeah, they're a bit of a fiddle. There's a really tight um, slot you have to slide the rubber in. You have to actually stretch the rubber membrane of the of the key slightly, and then and it just drops in. So that's in. Uh, so the next thing to do is just put the uh, circuit board back in, the actual contacts themselves. And that's basically just fixed behind the uh, back of the switch. That should just pop in. And you hear it click in there. It's locked in with two tangs. So that, in theory, if that was the problem, should fix the scope. So let's turn the scope up this way so you can see the display. Um, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll get the reconnect the keyboard back up. I'm not going to put it back together because I'm not sure that that is the problem. But it certainly looked like there was a was um, contamination on the switch. Okay. So then let's plug it back in. Uh, the phone down so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I switch it on now. Let's see what we get. Hmm. 
Ah, oh, well that message hasn't come back. Can we adjust anything? So this is a Volksma Division. Oh yes, we have adjustment. Excellent. Uh, okay, let's try some of the soft keys. Okay, yep, yeah, that looks okay. Time-based adjustment. That's working. So I think what we'll do is we'll just do... A, I think it's a diagnostic program on these. Uh, utility. So I've got my hand in the way. As I say, I haven't got the phone, uh, my proper camera here, so it's a bit awkward this evening. Um, system configuration. No. Previous menu. Service menu. Self test menu. Uh, let's do keyboard. Oh, okay, so this is basically you press all the buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Controls, you see, I'm doing the amplifier buttons. Attenuator, left and right. Two, three, one, two, one, two, three, left and right. One, two, three, four. Hold off, trigger level. No, that wasn't hold off, that was horizontal. This is hold off. Time base, trigger mode, trigger coupling. Slope and glitch, source, that one up there, run stop. Yep, that's it, that looks okay. Um, the display isn't great, it's a bit sort of murky, um, and it says hit run stop twice to exit to uh, test. So run stop twice, there we go. So we've exited from the, uh, the self diagnostic program. So it looks like it's working. Um, the thing to do now is to put it all back together. And to measure it, sit and check it for its performance. Now, if this scope works better than uh, my 54600, I'll put the 54600 up for sale um, and use this instead because these scopes, I've used these scopes in the past for, as I say, sort of probably most of my time working at the company I'm with at the moment, so 15 years or so. Uh, so I'm a fay with them. Uh, I like them, they're a great scope easy to use I know where everything is basically without even looking at the scope so it's it's always nice to sort of when you're repairing something not have to keep looking at the scope and sort of scratching ahead to work out where all the controls are so let's put this back together uh, and uh, let's see how it performs